Okay, so let's just start from local curve theory, chapter 2 of this textbook. So what is good thing to know the curves in R3? Actually, we consider curves in R3. You have some experience of those in calculus 3, right? So what do you remember from that course? Actually, um, if you have an equation, uh, from a equation or whatever the thing, we can visualize it, we can sketch it, okay? So, I can say all, but almost all curves can be visualized, right? And, and it's a, we can see at least, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Then, Mm -hmm. Use calculus, we can find the length. So we will, yeah, get there. And? Curvature. Curvature, good. We can measure how the curve curves, right? So we had arc length. Remember that we had the curvature. So those are the measures we can find using the curves in RSD, right? So we can visualize uh, mm -hmm. Then, mm, using the front SRA, we will see that what that is. Uh, we can determine whether two curves are the same up to position. So we can compare, actually, after some the, the calculation, we can compare whether two curves are the same or not, okay? And we can use curves uh, to study surfaces. So by studying the behavior of the curves uh, on surface, yeah, we can do something on the surface as well. So there are many reasons that we should know the curves in R3. Well, okay. Okay. Then, so here we need uh, some basics. Basic definitions. Uh, examples. Huh? So first, uh, actually, I'm going to give you three definitions. Regular curve. We are going to define regular curve from open interval. This is a open interval. Okay. We consider a curve in R3. Okay. Regular curve, r pi is a function from the open interval to the R3, okay, which is a CK. I'm going to tell you what that is. Uh, and derivative, the r pi dt is not zero for every t. So derivative of that is uh, not zero, and also we want that to be CK, which means uh, derivatives of that the curve up through order K exist. So that means uh, CK means uh, derivatives of alpha up through 
K, K orders of derivative exist and they are continuous. So first derivative, first order derivative, second order derivative. If you have a C3, then first order derivative, second de order, second derivative, third so derivative exist and they are all continuous. That is what I mean CK. But our case uh, mainly will use uh, C infinity. So, okay. Is everything okay so far? Okay. Mm -hmm. Then, second, the velocity. At T0. What is the velocity of the curve at T0? We learn that we interpret that as a position of uh, some object at time t. If you interpret that t as a time, then velocity of that the alpha of t at t zero is uh, that is the change of uh, rate of change of uh, the position, right? So that is uh, alpha prime t. If you specify the point at time. And T0, right? So we have a velocity vector field. It's yeah. just the alpha prime T. We use uh, this notation as well. Okay? If you let T vary, then that is velocity vector field. And what is speed? At uh, T0, if you specify time, then this is. Uh, Magnitude, right? Magnitude of the velocity. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Then mm -hmm. so uh, we assume that we assume that all curves are uh, um, regular for the course. So assume. So our whatever we uh, say the curve, then we assume that alpha is regular from now on. Or well, I'll give you the example. <laughs> it is not regular, but anyway, if I say the curve, then please assume that is the curve is regular. Okay. After we cover some examples, uh, so okay. Actually, regular because of that condition, then what is the speed? We assume that is never zero. So speed is not zero at any time, right, for a regular curve. Okay, okay then, well, what is the unit tangent? Unit tangent vector. Uh, mm -hmm. I use a big T for that. So we know that that is a tangent vector as well, right? Okay. So, but to be unique, divide by its length, right? Alpha prime T divide by its own length. Okay. Then that is a unit tangent vector. So again, the wheel some the curve is regular, so that the speed is never zero. Okay, then note, what is the equation of a tangent line to the curve? Do you remember? It actually is kind of a review, equation of a tangent line to the curve at T0. In order to determine the equation of the line, we need uh, we need uh, the point uh -huh, point goes through and the direction, right? Mm -hmm. So, if you say that is R of t 
a collection of uh, collection of uh, some uh, factors, then the W can be made by the point going through plus plus the parameter lambda and tangent. We can use the unit tan the, the unit tangent vector uh, RT. Okay, and lambda is a constant. Lambda equals zero, then it's a point it goes through. Lambda is positive, then it's alpha t zero point plus positive constant multiple of tangent makes uh, the help of the, the point the other way. If lambda is negative, then it generates the other part of the line. Then. And we use this one as a linear approximation as well, if you remember. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> okay, then here's the example. Okay. Let's take UV2 fixed to fixed vectors. Then we consider alpha from, yeah, just R to R3 this way. It's U plus PV. So UV are two fixed constant vectors. So if you consider this one, then when there is actually what case that, that when we have that is irregular? Is always regular? For that to be regular, we need one. What is the regularity condition? I just put that here. <laughs> derivative is non zero, right? So B is non zero. Right. So what is derivative of that? V, right? So V is non zero, then V is regular. Okay. Then what is the image of that? It's a line. It's a, line. It's a straight line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. Another one. Let's call this is a beta. It's a R two R three. This one. So beta 1 is T0, 0. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. right. Beta 2, T cubed. Or delta three t t cubed plus t zero zero. Uh oh, beta all the betas beta i. So beta one two three. Okay. So. What is the image of that? What is graph of that? Straight line? Uh, say more specific? <laughs> What's straight line? Uh-huh. 
because we put we use a y z a zero zero for the y z right so the image is uh, the x-axis right right mm -hmm. but what even though they have the same image eh? but there are some differences Huh? Derivative of that is uh, one zero zero, right? So is it regular or not regular, right? What about that? It's not regular at zero. zero. So it's not regular at zero. Then, yeah. So three t square plus one. That is uh, non-zero. So these two, actually these three have the same images. It generates the x-axis, right? Same. But these two are regular. But middle one is not regular. Okay. So as you learn from calculus 3, then parametric equation is not unique. We have several different ways to uh, have expression on the same curve. Okay, like that. Okay. And Okay, what about this? Same R2, R2. Probably you remember this. R and H positive constant. Do you remember that? What is that? It's a spiral, right? It's a gal helix, right? So that is that regular? Minus R cosine t. For calc three, we know how to differentiate the vector value of the function, right? R cosine t minus h. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> okay. I just copied some of that. Okay? Yeah. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Then. Is that regular everywhere? Yeah? Yes. Why? Because H. Simply speaking, H is positive, right? It's regular. So as you know that this is a circular helix. Okay. Then actually unit tangent vector is a what is the magnitude of that? Square root. I square sine square theta the t plus I square cosine square t makes I squared, right? I square plus h squared. So if you divide that out, then we have a unit tangent vector. Okay, then. Okay. Then, another definition. We had the three definitions, so let's call definition four. Okay. Uh, Reparametrization of the curve mm -hmm. that originally alpha is defined from the open interval a, a to a3 is a function that's called g 
is uh, another interval C, CD to AB. That is uh, one to one and on to. Okay. And also, uh, let's see. The G itself is C K, and each inverse G inverse is a C actually sorry C infinity or C K. So, if you see this mapping, this image, then you can understand better. So, we, have, we consider the curve alpha from the interval from A and B. Then we have a curve here, image, okay? Then reparametrization of the curve is uh, the function from another interval CD to the AB, this is a G. Then, then what? If you go through G and alpha, we have a same curve, right? So here, then we have we call that is a beta, then G composed with alpha gives the same image. But we can actually Rescale or reparameterize that the original parameter t we have uh, from the interval a b. Okay, so that's the idea of reparameterization. So by using some different parameter, then we can say we can study better on the curve. The curve itself doesn't change much; it's same image. But using this parameter, let's call it the t tilde then it might be easier or better to describe the curve, okay? So that's the idea of reparameterization, okay? We'll see soon the benefit of that, of the, having that one, okay? okay? Everything okay so far? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's not that bad so far. It's kind of a review of the calculus three we had, right? Okay. Okay, then next section is 2.2. How did we calculate the arc length of a curve? So alpha, we consider alpha A B2 R C or R2, but we consider space curve here and so yeah. Okay. So what is the way to get the arc length of the curve? Uh -huh. Do you remember how, why we had that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you remember how I, yeah, I explained that one? In CAL 2 and CAL 3, this one. So here, R3 or 2, yeah, it's okay. So we have a T interval. A, B, this alpha. So two major whole length arc lengths. Actually, this is alpha of A and this is alpha of B. But remember that we actually we did, uh, when we use a uh, regular curve in 2.1, what is the domain we use? 
we use a open interval, right? But here, we use a closed interval. Can you see the reason why? When you measure arc length, then it has to be <laughs> finite length, okay? Okay, then. Okay, then, what is the idea? So, to get the whole length of the arc, we need to know, we divide that one, cut in several pieces, and then we estimate, we find the length of the small arc first, and add them at all. That's the idea, right? So, to get the arc length of that small part of that small sub arc, then we use it. what? We estimate that by straight line, okay? So to get the length, that actually is a hypotenuse of right triangle underneath, then we need the length of this much and length of that, length of two legs. And that is uh, delta xi, this is a delta y, right? Okay, then that corresponds to what? Derivative of x uh, respect to t, and this is derivative of y respect to t, right? So what? That one, this length is uh, square root of delta xi squares delta yi squares. If you, if you consider z then, actually this one is delta zi squares approximate that. Okay, so then this is, uh, see, x uh, prime ti, okay, if you use the parameter, okay, t, and we take out all delta t, delta t squares, and then we can move out. This is a square, y prime ti square plus z prime ti squares. So that corresponds to the what? magnitude of alpha prime ti yeah, and dt. So arc length is some of such a thing. So then that comes to the what? Integral, right? Integral and magnitude of derivative and dt and t varies from A to B. Okay? So then we can get the whole arc length from the integral that way. Okay, then uh, arc length function. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the position. Oops. Just too sure. So G is a which means uh, G is uh, the function from interval C to C D to the AB. So G is uh, then alpha is the curve from AB to the RC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we consider closed interval. When you use uh, the arc length, uh, then the curve beta g composed with the alpha has the same arc length. As alpha. We do believe that they have the same image, so then obviously it should have the same yeah, arc length. But we can see it. We can show it then. Okay, by chamber and simple calculation, then you can show it then. Okay, so I'll give you the homework. This is a homework one. 
and problem number one. Actually, problem number one is uh, I want you to write some short history of a curve, local curve. So number number one is the history, and diagram number two. Okay, it's just uh, very short work. Okay, but I want you to see. Okay. okay. Then, what is good? What is good to know that? We introduce the arc length function. So here, change this a little bit. So we use S. S of T is defined this way. A T0 or A doesn't matter. From T0 to the T, so T is the variable. Okay. T0 is a fixed number. Okay. Then magnitude of this. Well, A is okay. Yeah, we use uh, A, so let, let me be consistent. Consistent. Then let's let's change that to A. So, if we have some value, specific number for t, that, for example, uh, if t is uh, b, what happens? If you plug b for t, then whole arc length uh, connecting from r of a, uh, alpha of a, and alpha of b, right? So by replacing, by changing t values, uh, we can get the corresponding arc lengths up to that point along the curve. Okay. So this is uh, as t grows. Uh, actually, assume t start from a. Okay. So that is uh, increasing as t changes from a to a certain point, uh, whatever that bigger than a. The value we add up. We are adding up the mole lengths, uh, right? So it's increasing, strictly increasing. Right? So it's a one to one. Right? Mm -hmm. So, what do you know about the one to one function? It's in the inverse of this. So we can change it, TNS. So we have uh, this possible. We can change the TNS, right? Mm -hmm. So we originally alpha in terms of t, but with that change, we can do T S, right? So we have a parameter, new parameter, arc length parameter. So let's call this is a beta of s. Okay? Okay. Then what is the derivative with respect to? Actually, this is d beta ds. Right? Then, then how to differentiate that? Actually, yeah. This beta is same as alpha, right? So we can do this is a d alpha dt and dt ds. Chain rule, right? So we know the alpha dt is alpha prime t. Then what is dt ds? Right. Here, by that definition, 
you see? ds dt is a derivative of this respect to t is a magnitude of other prime t. And it never zero, right? So what is dt? dt over ds? One over magnitude of the Right, that is a unit tangent vector. So what do you know? We see beta, our reparameterized curve with respect to arc length. So this is a reparameterized curve with respect to arc length is the beta we I call this one the magnitude of that derivative of that newly developed curve has a unit tangent vector is a unit unit speed Okay. Actually, if you compare beta and alpha, beta and alpha, for the different t's, the tangent alpha prime t has a different length along the curve. The length of that tangent is varying, right? But beta, same image, but if you with the new parameter s, this beta is going to be unit speed. The tangent vectors are all unit tangent, have a length of one. Okay? It changes the directions, uh, still changes the directions, but lengths uh, are all unit. I mean, tangent, okay? Uh, all right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Everything is okay? Yeah, okay. So, let's see. I plan. Okay. Then here's the example. The circular helix. Okay, let's do that example again. So we have R cosine T, R sine T. So we have derivative, and we have the magnitude of derivative, square root of R square plus H squared. We have that. Right? A few minutes ago. Okay. Then what is the arc length uh, function then? So that is uh, actually we assume that we start from zero. Okay, T. The magnitude of that is actually is a constant. Uh, T. So this is simply this t. So is s s equal to the constant times t? Because we assume r and h are constants, positive constants, right? So is it possible to solve for t? So if you solve for t, then simply s over this. So let's reparameterize that curve. So beta, alpha, t, s, instead of t, let's put 
pi cosine s over that. Then h t. It's the same curve, but this one has been reparameterized with arc lengths. So the, the, let's call this is beta bus. Yeah? Then is it really a unit speed curve? If you check the derivative, then what? Minus r over that. Sine s over this r over this cosine s over that then h over this. Right? Then what is magnitude of that? That one, i squared over i squared plus h squared, right? And sine squared plus cosine squared, that makes one, plus h squared over, right? so that is one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that is very neat, that example. The next one, yeah, I, I have a time. Okay. Another example. This is very lucky one. Next one. Let's consider that. So if you do same calculation, as we did here, alpha prime t is 1, t, 0. Right? So what is Aquilinx function? If you start from 0, okay, magnitude of that is square root of 1 plus t square. Actually, that integral turns out to be It's not simple like that, the other one, first one. So inverse function exists, uh, but, however, we have a problem. What is the problem? Right, we can't really solve S in terms of, I mean, tangent T for in terms of S, right? So it's can solve T, this one. It's implicitly given. We cannot find an explicit formula to change it the other way, right? So actually, we do know that it exists, but we can change it, that one parameter T in terms of S, like that first example. We do know it exists, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so don't expect that. We always can do something like that. But, but however, we do know the existence of the curve beta with respect to S. 
that exists and it is unispeed even though we don't know the expressed formula for that okay